Hi, how's it going? Most modern, reasonable quality audio interfaces tend to have enough clean gain for even most dynamic microphones. But is the same true for passive ribbon microphones? Ribbon mics are getting more popular, and while many of the options are active these days with built-in preamplifiers, there are still a lot of passive ribbon mics out there. Maybe you were hoping to give one a try for spoken word and wondered if a typical USB audio interface was enough to drive it without any help. Let's find out. Passive ribbon mics present two challenges for a preamp. First, they require a lot of gain. They also have a strong proximity effect and are really sensitive to plosives, and not just create pops in your audio sensitive, but strong plosives can literally damage a ribbon mic if you aren't careful sensitive. Basically, you want to back off of them a bit most of the time. You won't be right up on the mic like you often are with an SM7B, for instance. This often leads to a ribbon mic needing even more gain than it otherwise might. The second consideration is a little less obvious. Ribbon microphones have a relatively high output impedance. And if your preamp has too low of an input impedance, the two can be roughly the same, which can affect the frequency response of the microphone. I'm going to test several different configurations to see how well each setup works and how they compare. I'll be about 10 inches or so from the mic, for each test. First I'll explain the setups I'm going to use, and then I'll record a bit with each. First I'll connect the mic directly to a Scarlett Solo third generation. I figured that would be a good representation of a typical USB audio interface. The Scarlett Solo has a specified input impedance of 3 kilo ohms. Then I'll add a Cloudlifter CL1 in line. The CL1 adds roughly 25 dB of gain, and also has a stated input impedance of 3 kilo ohms. Then I'll connect the microphone to a solid state logic preamp, and I'll record into my mix pre from there. I chose to use this SSL preamp for this test because it has a stated input impedance of just 1.2 kilo ohms. So it'll be interesting to hear if it affects the sound of my voice in a noticeable way. Finally, I'll test with the microphone connected to an AEA preamp designed for ribbon microphones. It has a lot of gain and a stated input impedance of over 60 kilo ohms. So let's get started. Connor slammed down onto the roof of a parked car, glass shattering as his boots crashed against the windshield. He groaned and started to roll over. Cars didn't make for as soft a landing as the movies made it seem. As he rolled over, he felt a stab of pain in his right arm and he slipped, falling the last few feet onto the pavement. Yep, pavement is harder. He was glad he landed on the car. He still hurt all over. He was pretty sure it was Donnie's car, so that made him feel a little better. Connor had known Donnie would be mad, but he didn't think he would try anything. He sure as hell didn't think Donnie would body check him through a second floor window. Connor got to his feet, groaning again from the pain that seemed to be coming from pretty much everywhere. He saw what caused the sharp pain in his arm. There was a long cut, likely from the window Donnie shoved him through. A quick check told him there were no other serious injuries. Time to push through the pain and see if Donnie wanted to go for round two. That is, assuming he didn't have a way out of the building other than the door he'd just given Connor a shortcut to standing in front of. Connor didn't have to wait long to find out. It was only a few moments before Donnie burst out of the door and nearly fell on his face as he came skidding to a stop. Donnie had either thought the fall would put Connor out of commission, or he simply hadn't thought at all before pushing Connor out of a window right above his only exit. Connor was standing right in Donnie's way, blood running down one arm, but very much not out of commission. To his credit, or discredit, Connor wasn't sure which, Donnie charged, probably hoping to bowl Connor over and make a break for it. Connor leaned to the right, grabbed Donnie's left arm, and used Donnie's own momentum to hurl him into the car Connor had landed on moments earlier. Donnie tried to get both arms up to stop himself, but Connor had pulled his left arm so far back before letting go, he just didn't have time. His left side hit the car hard, knocking the wind out of him. Long before he had a chance to recover, Connor had Donnie's arms behind his back and was ratcheting handcuffs in place. Aw, oh, come on, man, Donnie whined. Can't we just talk? You shoved me out a window, Connor snapped. My original plan was to talk. Donnie started turning around to face Connor and chuckled as he said, I guess that plan went out the window, too. 
Connor stopped Donnie partway through his turn and spun him back. Keep facing the car. This isn't a joke. You could have killed me. Donnie said, You're fine. I mean, I looked like your arm was bleeding pretty bad, but you'll be fine. All right, I panicked, okay? Come on, man, I really wasn't trying to hurt you. Could have fooled me, said Connor. Besides, you could have tried to talk once you came down, but you came at me again. So, you're going to wait for me down at the station while I get my arm stitched up, and then we're going to talk. No way, Donnie exclaimed. You can't. Nobody can know I'm talking to you. Come on, man. You know, Connor said, then sighed and spun Donnie around to face him. Come on, man, isn't the compelling argument you seem to think it is. Connor shook his head and started leading Donnie away from the car. But he was leading him back inside, not toward his own car around the corner. Connor glanced down at his arm, and as they started up the stairs, he said, You better have a first aid kit in that not-so-secret hideout of yours. So, there you have it. Just a quick video today, and hopefully it gives you an idea of what type of setup you may want if you're looking to use a passive ribbon microphone for voiceover. Obviously, there are a ton of other options, but this should give you a general idea of what may work for you. And speaking of other options, during the intro part of this video and this part of the video when I wasn't showing a specific configuration, I was actually recording directly into my MixPre-3 with the same ribbon microphone with the gain set at 65 out of 76. Just so you know. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care.